Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Narrow Gate, the narrow gate of scripture where we take topics and we look at it through the narrow gate of scripture. And we've actually been in the book of Genesis for the last several weeks, uh, talking about what I call the story of everything, Genesis 1, 2, and 3. And well, we just decided to continue on to chapter four today. We're going to keep going. Let's go. We're just going to keep, just keep it rolling. Maybe we just go through the whole Bible. <laughs> oh, that's the narrow gate the whole bible in 13 years there you go okay we just take the whole bible through the narrow there you go right right until our right until we get taken back to the lord oh uh, <laughs> why the act why the you know the accent I, why i don't know just for fun uh, okay for fun. so doug thank you for asking i'm doing i'm doing well thank you um yes how are our listeners doing Doug, they're really enjoying. Good. That's what they're telling me. I mean, I'm glad. That's fantastic because we're enjoying it. I enjoy doing this with you. And so if it can be of uh, um, any enlightenment to you guys or entertainment, that's fine too. Or um, how about just uh, edification? Well, that's what I meant by enlightenment. Sorry, <laughs> I, I, I didn't use this, the, the seminary word. Yeah. <laughs> Edification is what we are. We are about edifying the body using the gifts that God has given us. <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever the spirit does with it, bro, I'm in. You're in. Okay, good. But we got to test the spirits, Dougie. Uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> Anyways, all right, Dougie, are you losing a little weight? I don't know. I mean, you look like you've kind of leaned up a little bit here. Is this like a pre-Thanksgiving deal before you go? I don't know. I don't know. I had, a, I had an interesting week, V. All right. Why don't you share it? It's just between you and me. Don't worry about it. Well, and it's, it's going to sound dramatic, but so my daughter was running in the New York, ran in the New York City Marathon on Sunday. That's we were right, going man. to take a train up at 6.15 a.m. from Norfolk to D.C., get in the afternoon. We had some friends coming in. We had my other daughter coming in. My son was coming. We we're going to have a grand time just cheering her on uh, on the uh, marathon. So um, before that, the last couple of weeks, I've had like what I thought was a deep chest cold. And I'm like, yeah, it's just I kept waiting for it to go away. And um the last few days, uh, last week, like Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, really out of breath, just out of breath doing it, just walking from one room to another, like, this is weird, and uh, did not sleep well Friday night, got up, I thought, okay, I'll get on the train, I'll go to sleep, I mean, I was huffing and puffing, just taking a shower, going downstairs, I couldn't carry my suitcase out to the car, we get in the car, I'm like, hey, can you drive to my son, and my wife's like, I don't know that we should go. And I'm like, I don't know if I should go. You guys should definitely go, but I'll just go home. Uh, so we have this debate driving 30 minutes to the, to the place. And, and this is the beautiful thing about marriage. This is a great marriage story. My wife says, well, you have to make the call. I'm not going to make the call. You're the one that doesn't feel good. I said, okay, I'll make the call. We're going. Let's do it. Um, 10 minutes later, she goes, we're going to the emergency room. Um, so we went to the emergency room and, uh, and it turns out that I had pulmonary emboli, which are blood clots in the lungs. Oh, so my. It, yeah. It was a good thing that we went to the emergency room. Oh, very yeah. good thing. It was something that is, um, you can take care of it pretty easily without mm -hmm. cracking open a chest. So they did a procedure where they just went up through an artery and um, took out some of the blood clots. So I was in the hospital till Tuesday um, and things look good enough and I came home and I feel good um, and a little tired, but otherwise good. And wow. uh, that's my week, bro. Thank the Lord that yeah. you didn't continue to go. Yeah, that probably would have been good because they kept saying, have you been, have you sat for a long trip? Because that's really bad. And I'm like, I was just about to sit for an eight hour train ride. And, you know, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's incredible. It was an incredible experience. I was, I was never really afraid because I wasn't in, I wasn't in, I wasn't in huge pain or anything. So, and they were just kind of like, okay, this is what we see. And this is how we'll do it. And so it was, 
you know, it just kind of went along. But here's what, here's the spiritual thing that I saw. It's amazing how we are all made in the image of God, whether people know who God is or not, they're image bearers. Mm -hmm. And just what we can do medicine wise. And when people have gifts and passions, which all these medical people did, the nurses, the doctors, yeah. to see what they can do to, for someone who goes, I have no idea. I mean, right. I'm, I'm totally in your hands was, was really kind of a, an incredible blessing. And, and I don't know where they were spiritually. I didn't know what their views were. They knew I was a pastor. There weren't a lot of conversations that, that came up, but um, just to see the image of God being played out yeah. in people is pretty incredible and yeah. their passions yeah. and their, their um, desire to, to be in the, you know, talking to one, one of the nurses in the ICU, because I was in the ICU for a little while. Um, I'm like, why, why did you choose this? And she's like, I just wanted to be in the place where it was the highest level of care needed. And mm -hmm. I'm like, man, that takes a special person. Um, so that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, well, praise the Lord that, uh, you know, he sovereignly and, provid and providentially prevented you from going on that long trip. And I know how much you were looking forward to that. Yes, and that was uh, a hard one. That was a hard course. one. And Emma did great. Emma, they, they had a great time. Uh, the people who did make it up had a great time. She did great in the marathon. They missed us, but they were certainly happy that we made the right choice. And I have to give props to my son because from the minute we got in the car, he was like, we should take him to the emergency room. Mm -hmm. um, and he was right. So my wife, made the final call but that was his call the whole time so yeah, props well, to hate good. yeah well and also just pray again praise god that uh, you were able to come through that really unscathed now are there any like um uh, things that you have to now in the future be aware of be careful of well taking blood thinners so we'll see we'll take blood thinners for a little while we'll see what that does yeah. Um, and either stay on them or not. So I it's, got you. It's managed that way, um, okay. but it shouldn't. But otherwise, there's no limitations. Or I went for a, a walk today, not as long as I usually go, but yeah. uh, went for one. So I'll start getting more and more. But yeah. um, on the mend. Well, that's good. And now I can see how why you lost weight. Maybe. maybe. Yeah. I mean, you're <laughs> just that's, you're, that's a good thing too. You are just getting lean. This is. <laughs> Now, uh, what about your diet? Will you have to adjust, manage in a different way? No, no, they didn't say anything like that. I, I probably should, and maybe I will. You know, something like this tends to get you thinking, yeah, maybe I should, maybe pizza, maybe not as much, you know. Um, well, I mean, Dougie pizza. I mean, that's, that's I think that's on the list in the Old Testament of allowable food. I think so. so yeah, you know what I'm saying? I think Pete... You can't cut out pizza, Doug. I think it's like an act of worship, isn't it? <laughs> it's. I mean, think think about how joyful and thankful you are as you're eating a pizza. It's true. I am. Right? I'm, I'm I mean, like, as compared to eating like, I don't know, asparagus. Yes, you know, true. You know, that's, I, th I think that's off limits. That's one of, the, one of the foods from the Old Testament that's off limits. But pizza, come on, Dougie. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you. I needed that. Yeah, well, that. little little guidance. And the thing is, I would say that okay, continue with the pizza, but do it in moderation. But pizza in moderation, I don't think those two those those two words aren't even in the same. I uh, yeah, stadium. you have to define that because everyone's definition of moderation is different. Yeah, I mean, yeah. for me, moderation would be instead of eating the entire pie, you know, large pan pizza from Pizza Hut. <laughs> I would my for me moderation would be Danielle would you like a piece and right. that's a struggle that's a struggle for me right 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 and and I don't you know I don't I don't know that that's even necessary I think all pie is the way it was that's why it's one pie I mean they're 100 Dougie right and you know I call single, it it's a single serving <laughs> <laughs> exactly serving size one pie large. right right yeah. I mean, if she wants to get wings on the side and, you know, whatever else, let her have a blast. 
Yeah, I'm I don't. I don't any of those because I'm disciplined. Right, exactly. <laughs> Moderation, Dougie. You know what I'm saying? We're focused, exactly. right? Exactly. We forget what's behind. We we focus on what's in front of us. <laughs> so that that's my big story. I knew that that would be a, that would take a little bit of our time, but um, that's where I am. But I'm super glad to be here today. I've been looking forward to it. But in in all fairness, you, dear listeners, if you've noticed. He's done, but he did it again. He turned everything towards him. <laughs> Notice what he just did. The, he literally just spent 10 minutes talking about himself. Notice also, dear listeners, he did not rock once when he was talking about himself. <laughs> we were right on schedule. We were doing what we should be doing. <laughs> talking now, about you, right? Well, no, but let's not talk about me anymore. Let's talk about some of the things I've done recently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm going to pray, Andrew, and then we're going to start in, in Genesis chapter. How four. about I pray? Okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for protecting Doug. Mm. Our Doug, your Doug, uh, our dear beloved brother Doug. Thank you so much for protecting him. Thank you for providing wisdom and conviction to both uh, his wife Sarah and his son Hayden um, by not having them continue the trip and instead have Doug go to the hospital. Thank you so much for that. Thank you that you gave him wonderful doctors and nurses and that you brought him successfully through um, the procedure he had to go through. We pray, Lord, that he would just go slow now and just slowly recover and that you would bring him back to full strength where he's able to walk and, and, and do what he does uh, with normal breathing. We pray that uh, you would just protect him from any further episodes like he had. And again, we're just so grateful for your sovereign grace in his life and in the life of the Halp family. And Lord, also, again, blessing us because uh, we do love Doug and we're so grateful that nothing serious happened to him. Uh, we pray for your blessings now in our study. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, bro. Right. Um, yeah, we're in Genesis. Uh, we have been for several weeks looking at Genesis chapters one, two, and three. And, and can I can I interrupt this real quick? Yeah. Um, little confession now. Uh, so the listeners know, um, Doug, after we had finished, I guess it was last week, right? We finished Genesis three. Um, as we were saying our goodbyes, you said, okay, V, where are we going to go next week? I, I don't know. You decide, Dougie. And I said, we can keep going on in Genesis or whatever you decide. So I never heard from my, my dear Doug this week where he didn't even give me a heads up saying, hey, this is what we're going to study. Now I understand why. Now I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> then I got a little like, I can't believe he's not contacting me. <laughs> so, oh. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you anyways, because I know you love the you love the surprise. You love the oh, we get to go here. I do. So we're going to. So I I'm sorry, I cut you off. I little confession time. No, you that's know? good. I think you need to keep confessing these things. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your expertise on my <laughs> need to confess. Need to confess. Pr yeah. Proceed, dear Doug. Yes, so we've been looking at Genesis chapters one, two, and three, and and we kind of, I've called it the story of everything, just because we see why we're here, how we got here, um, why things are uh, are the way they are. Um, so we see God creating everything um, in in incredible grace and beauty and power, creating the heavens and the earth and, and perfection, perfect, perfection, perfect, feeling it and everything working well, and again just watch nature shows or something like that. And you start going, this is amazing how everything fits together. Even how about your body in the hot? How about how intricate your body is? At your body. Exactly. How, how, what it can do and how it can heal itself. Yes. It's unbelievable. 
Um, and it's all created in perfection. And then he creates man and woman and um, in his image. And um, then basically says, I want you to oversee all this. This is yours to oversee. You are to And to care. enjoy. To enjoy. To be fruitful and multiply. Oh, really? To worship God, enjoy him and rep be his representative and enjoy the blessings of God. Yes, of which there are many everywhere they look. They went blessing, 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 just like us, actually. Um, but then something happened. Genesis chapter three, things turn um, after in Genesis. Two, turned or would we say collapsed in corruption collapse. yeah turn was too too soft of a word everything collapsed and the collapse was caused by man by adam and eve and uh adam had gotten a command from god that said you're gonna eat from any tree in the garden um but there's a tree in the middle of the garden there were two of them the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and he said uh, the one tree you can eat from is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil if you do you will surely die. That will be the result. But any other tree you can eat from. And so Adam, good, godly man, no sin nature, looking around at everything God had graciously provided for Adam, Adam listened to God, right? Uh, well, in Genesis 3, we see a serpent come uh, and ask Eve a series of questions to get her thinking that perhaps eating the fruit from that tree in the middle of the garden was a good idea. But wait a second, didn't God say not a good idea? He, God said not a good idea. He was very clear. He, in fact, not a good idea. He said, if you eat from it, you're going to die. Very um, bad idea. Horrible idea. Just don't do it. Don't go there. Um, but Eve did. And Adam was standing right next to her. And they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil as God had told them and commanded them not to. And suddenly, at a, in a moment, in a blink of an eye, everything changed and, or collapsed, as you would say. Um, they began, they felt fear for the first time. They felt shame for the first time. They, uh, they, they blamed uh, others. God came looking for them in his incredible grace instead of them dying at that moment. <clears throat> God came looking for them as he normally did, um, and they hid from him. Which, again, showed that they actually <laughs> did die in one realm. They died spiritually. They no longer were connected to God. They no longer were in, in, in an intimate relationship with God. Sin had separated them from God, and sin had caused them to die to God to mm -hmm. die spiritually though they didn't immediately die physically they did die as god had said they died spiritually they were then facing physical and eternal death and and it's interesting part of that dying to god dying spiritually was their view of god changed entirely exactly so instead of the one who came walking to them normally they would go oh good he's here daddy let's go let's walk they went oh no He's here. Let's run. Totally different view of God. And because we all inherited their sin nature, we all do the same thing. That is really our natural response when it comes to the holiness of God. We run, which makes sense because in comparison to the infinitely pure and perfect holy God, our wretchedness is exposed. That light, his light, the light of God shines in our darkness and we see the reality of our situation, which is um, not um, appealing. Right. And so I'm sure you've had to deal with this as a pastor. Uh, you know, when I'm speaking to people in the congregation or if I haven't seen them in a while, you know, you, you, you make the nice gentle call. Hey, how are you doing? And, and immediately, right? You hear, oh, I was doing this. I'm sorry, I missed church. Blah, blah, blah. Great. You've been reading the scriptures? Well, you know, I've been listening to 
you know, Christian music in my drive and all that stuff. No, have you been, I haven't seen you in Bible study. Well, what's, what's going on? Well, you know, a little busy, but, but I'll, why are you running from the light of truth? What's going on? Mm. Doesn't that happen? Of course. Of course, that happens. It happens to all of us. Um, uh, and, and that's part of the reason why we're called to be a body of Christ is to uh, watch out for each other and help each other, not judge one another, but to help one another and, and uh, encourage each other to not give up meeting together um, so that we can overcome these things because it is a, it is a response that is very common to man. It really is. Danielle had sent me a, um, a text the other day. I don't know where she got it from, but j- just listen to this. Um, talking about the church and how vital it is for us to be together as the body of Christ. The text, as church attendance numbers fade across the nation and online services become very convenient, it's important to remember why church attendance for you and your family matters so much. You can't serve from your sofa. You can't have community of faith on your sofa. You can't experience the power of a room full of believers worshiping together on your sofa. Christians are not consumers. We are contributors. We don't watch. We engage. We give. We sacrifice. We encourage. We pray by laying hands on the hurting. We do life together. Christian, the church needs you. And Christian, you need the church. Amen. That's good. And that's a, that's a very appropriate uh, thing right now. I mean, we were blessed with the technology that we had when we couldn't be together. Right. Um, and, and I was grateful for it. And, and I am grateful for it. Yeah. Um, but there, there, there are a couple of people in our church that have continued to stay online because <laughs> it's just kind of nice. And it's I miss just them. Easy. <laughs> and I, I miss them. I miss seeing them. I miss hugging them. I miss looking them in the eye. I miss just conversing with them because you don't do it as much yep. when they're online. Um, yeah. Well, and I think a lot of times, because uh, again, I, in like manner, there are some who kind of are still in our congregation, the, the, the same thing. And, you know, um, you know, you want to be gentle and understand it. Because again, perhaps some people still are a bit concerned sure. because of sure. the COVID and we've got to respect that totally get it right um but for those who i know that's not as big of a concern the COVID, but they're just you know um they enjoy the couch um you know i like to say to them when they say well andrew it's okay i'm i'm getting everything i need or i'm i'm blessed you know just online i okay so but who are you blessing? Who's benefiting from you? Hmm. Right? Yeah, of course. I mean, like you said, just getting a hug. I mean, I know how I feel when someone comes up and hugs me or we pray together or, you know, they come up afterwards and, you know, I have to clear up a lot of confusion from my message and stuff, but just talking God talk with them is such a blessing. And the body needs that, right? I mean, I miss that in people when they're not around, don't you? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So those of you listening, if you want to make your pastor Doug or Andrew feel good, you don't need to tell us afterwards, oh, oh the message was great or, oh, the, you know what? Come up and give us a hug. Tell us you love us. Let us tell you we love you. Let's pray together. And do it to I, someone else. Do it to someone else there. Too. Yeah, right? Yeah. So anyways. Yeah. Well, 
And the point of all that that we just talked about is it, it is our inclination as human beings and Christians are included is we pull away from the body when, when things, um, it, when darkness, when we recognize some darkness, a lot of times that's what we'll do. That's what Adam and Eve did. God though came to them. We see <laughs> a result of it. Uh, there's there's um, a result for the serpent and Jesus, uh, uh, the I'm sorry, God promises to send a Messiah in Genesis 3.15. Or the Messiah. The Messiah. Yeah. Thank you. The Messiah. And, uh, and the Messiah will eventually um, destroy the serpent. Will, uh, the serpent will strike his heel, but the, the Messiah will crush his head. There are ramifications um, from the sin for the woman and for the man. And then uh, God clothes them with the skins of an animal covers them properly after they had tried to cover themselves with external resources. God says, let me cover you because you didn't do a very good job. So not only did God promise the Messiah, but he also gave a picture of by covering, right? By killing an animal and covering them with God's covering. That's a mm -hmm. picture of Christ. The shedding of blood that provides a covering yep. over the sin. Um, and then they're, they're, forced out of the garden, um, not in uh, judgment as much as in allowing them or, or preventing them from uh, eating from the tree of life and continuing in that fallen state Very good. forever. Yep. And so Again, now they're, it, they're out. They're out yep. of the garden. <clears throat> and so now we're going to go to Genesis 4. Mm -hmm. Doggy. Yeah, that doesn't get better. Now what we're going to start to see immediately, Dougie, the consequences mm -hmm. of the fall. We, we saw the consequences of the fall when it came to Adam and Eve's relationship to God and even towards each other. Mm -hmm. um, we see, you know, they had died to God spiritually. Um we saw last week that God graciously allowed Adam to name Eve and call her the mother of all the living, which meant that God graciously would allow Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply. To carry out the, the mission that he had given. Problem is, every one who would come from Adam and Eve would come into this world in the same state Adam and Eve were in when they, after they fell. A fallen state. Sin nature. People who would come into this world loving God, worshiping God, submitting to God, or people who would come into this world running from God, wanting nothing to do with God, and actually, as scripture says in Romans 5, being and hostile enemies. to God. Yeah, enemies, enemies in God. Romans 8. Uh, yeah. And so as we go into chapter 4, we are going to start to see children of Adam and Eve. But to set this up, you have to understand, and I think I mentioned it in one of our recent podcasts, but let's go back to chapter 3, Dougie, if I can. Mm hmm when God had pronounced the curse on Satan, verse 15, God said to Satan, I will put enmity, hatred, discord, strife between you, Satan, and the woman, between your seed, Satan, and her seed. And then the promise, the Messiah would come through her seed. He will bruise you on the head, Satan, even though you will bruise him on the heel. We see in this promise, again, we, we, we know it's called the Proto-Evangelion, the, the, the first gospel, the first good news. And again, it's interesting, right in the midst of that chaos there in the garden, uh, because of, the, of Adam and Eve's disobedience, we see the good news that the Messiah was going to come and he would reverse the curse. Now, and again, good, and that good news was proclaimed by God, by God, of course, of course. 
And so we see that, but we also see something else here. Two seeds. Two lines. Because prior to the fall, you only had one line, the godly line, right? There was no sin. There was no death. You had one line. Now, God says there are going to be two lines, two seats. You would have the godly line. You would have through that line, the seed of the woman, the Messiah come. The Messiah would save his people. But you have the other line. Satan's line. You've got two lines. And with that in mind, we now come into Genesis 4. And we are about to see these two lines. The seed of the woman, godly line, the seed of Satan, ungodly. We're going to see this play out in real life. And it starts out with two brothers. Exactly. Would, would you read, Douglas? I wanted yes. to give you a little breath. I could uh, a little break there. That's no, no, why I jumped. No. I saw you kind of just a little bit struggle. So. Um, and 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 I think um, by way of introduction to this this topic, um, it's important for us practically because a, a question that is a great question to ask and that is a difficult question to answer is people say, well, you believe in this God who's all good. Why is the world such a mess? And we know the answer. And these, this is important to understand because when we ask that question or when that question is asked, and, and if you're a Christian, if you haven't asked that question, I don't know that you've thought very deeply, to be honest with, with you. I mean, uh, that, that, that is a valid question. Yep. And when things go tough in our lives, you will ask that question. But ultimately, it seems like we're asking that question with our finger pointed at God. There you go. And, and just like Adam and Eve, if you remember, when God said, what happened? Who told you you were naked? Adam says, the woman <clears throat> you gave me, um, that was the problem. Not me. Not yep. me. So, yep. Um, the the suffering thing and the and the evil thing, there's a part where we have to look back into ourselves and look at man, yep, and not point our finger at God because that's what we've seen here and we'll we'll see a little bit more. So that's where the pra I think that's a practical aspect to everything we've hundred percent, Dougie. It's the difference. Um, I think it was uh, Ken Ham. You remember? Did you ever study Ken Ham? Mm -mm. Um, he, uh, I think he's an Australian. Uh, he has a ministry called Answers in Genesis. And I was introduced to him before I had moved to Croatia. And uh, very funny guy. He's got that great accent, you know, and I mean, just really phenomenal when it comes to, you know, really the first 11 chapters of Genesis. So I would definitely recommend uh, to people, if they want to dig deeper, they can they can go to his ministry. I think he's got the uh, in Kentucky the um, uh, what is that the big Noah's Ark exhibit, whatever. So, anyways, make a long story short. I remember Ken Ham saying, and it follows up, Dougie, on what you were saying. Understanding, really, the first eleven chapters of Genesis is all the difference between who you shake your fist at when you are sitting at the gravesite of a loved one. Mm. How true is that? Very. Right? My father died. I wasn't shaking my fist at God and blaming God. I was shaking my fist at Adam and blaming Adam. Right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, I deal with an illness or I have my back surgery or Danielle had illness, you know, her brother passes away. I'm not shaking my fist at God. I'm shaking my fist at Adam. Right. Mm -hmm. Because what God created was perfect. 
didn't include that. There was no sin, no death, no disease, no killing, no murder, no, um, you know, no hatred. I mean, it was Garden of Eden, no curse. But then Adam, who had the command from God, decided, really? Maybe I can become like God. Maybe I could do a little better. I mean, this is good, but maybe right. even better. <laughs> so. Well, and that and, and it, isn't that when we do shake our fist at God, isn't that what we're saying? Yes. We're just saying that you did not do this well. You did, right. You, that you did not handle this situation the way it should have been handled. Right. You know, God, you know, um, you know, why did you allow me to, you know, have blood clots in my, my lungs and, and almost die? And, and, you know, God, you know, had I had full control of my life, like I want, um, I could have prevented this. Huh. Which is totally untrue. I mean, logically, we'd sit there and go, that's so ridiculous. And yet on a daily basis, I struggle with that. Well, logically is one thing. Emotionally is another thing. Right, Dougie? Yes, absolutely. That's why, again, God's word needs to settle, you know, very, very heavy on our hearts so that we don't allow our, 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 our view to be led by our emotions. Hmm. Rather, our emotions need to be controlled and led by God's truth. Right. Right? Yeah. So... <laughs> We're gonna hit chapter four. We're not. Are you okay? Are you okay? Do you need like a get on I a respirator or something? Every once in a while, no, I'm good. So we're probably just gonna introduce these two characters today. Um, but characters are uh, real life people. These two fictional myths. Yeah. So you're no, going no, back to your acting characters, people. right? These two, these two people, as you said, two brothers. Yep. Here's, here's what it says. Chapter four of Genesis, starting in verse one. Now Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. I love it. Giving credit to the Lord. And again, she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain a worker of the ground. So you have a shepherd and a farmer. Mm-hmm. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground, and Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock. Stop the there. Isn't that interesting? Way back at the very beginning, people were bringing offerings to the Lord, offering worship to the Lord. Mm -hmm. This was part of the very beginning. Now, although scripture doesn't tell us, you know, when God had communicated that, obviously to Adam, we know that it would have been communicated to Adam because look what the two boys did. They worked and they brought an offering to the Lord. This was their act of worship, right? Mm -hmm. So far, so good, except we're told that Cain, the, the uh, farmer, he brought what, Dougie? An offering of the fruit of the ground. As compared to Abel, who brought the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. What would be the key difference between the two offerings? Is it because uh, Cain brought um, maybe, let's say, some sort of fruit or grain from the field? Some people have said that's why God didn't accept it. Well, and by the way, go ahead and finish verse four. So we let the cat out of the bag. How did God, re God regard the two boys and their offerings? And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. Ah, uh, some people have said, you know why? Because Cain offered something from the field. 
let's say, fruit or grain, and that God only wanted offerings of animals, what would we say to that? I would say that's untrue. Correct, because if you fast forward to, let's say, Leviticus, when the nation of Israel was camped at Mount Sinai, and God was instituting the priesthood and instituting the sacrifices in the offering system, what was one of the offerings that God commanded the Israelites to make? There were grain offerings. Grain offerings, right? <laughs> so there was nothing wrong here with Cain's offering that it came from the field. Shepherds weren't necessarily better than farmers. Very good. So we, we completely will, will, will dispute those who say, well, Cain's offering was from the ground. No. What was the difference, Douglas, in their two offerings? Well, it just says Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. So he just brought something from the ground. Abel, it says he brought the firstborn of his flock, which seems to be um, highlighting the uh, quality or the value of the offering. Excellent. Abel offered the best to the Lord, the first fruit, where the indication here is that Cain, kind of modern day language, lobbed God his leftovers. Cain came to worship, but he didn't offer his best. Mm. Really, what we see here is not so much the external offerings, but the internal heart. Right. It's a, it's a, it's a reflection of the heart. Very good. Abel's heart, Abel's heart towards God was different than Cain's heart towards God. Excellent. Uh, you mentioned about worship being you know, something that was right at the very beginning. And I would say this, we, we, we are designed to worship Yeah, part of, part of who we as human beings are. So whether you recognize God or worship God or not, you worship something. That's right. That's uh, right. And so we, we all naturally will worship something. And if you wonder, I don't know about that, Doug, go to a football game, an NFL game, and go into the parking lot beforehand, and then go into the game and just see the excitement that people have. Nothing wrong with that. Have a ball, paint your face. But you're worshiping <laughs> right. something. And, That's and, right. Uh, or go to an expensive car dealership and see the people just walking around salivating and, you know, <laughs> I mean, and, and you could go to any nation. You could go to the most remote part of the world and you will see people worshiping. Yeah. Maybe it's a tree. Maybe it's a cow. Maybe it's a rat. Maybe it's whatever, the sun, the moon, but people worship because god ecclesiastes chapter three has put eternity in every human and 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 think about all the different religions there are 100 percent the reason why there's a bunch of different religions 100 percent so when you're made to worship you kind of look around and you go what should we worship so you worship big things you worship things that are out of your control storms the god of thunder thor that's right, um, that's right. So, well, isn't that the same problem the Israelites had? And why, why did God come down on them so hard? Well, wait a second, they were worshiping. Yes, but they were not worshiping the true living God. They were worshiping false gods, gods of their own making. In fact, let me just, let's go real quick to Malachi, Doug, just to kind of tie in, and we don't have to go much further, because I don't want you to have to get rushed to the hospital again. Uh, Mal oh, you heard me on that. Malachi chapter one. This idea of kind of lobbing God, you know, your second best, almost treating God like, uh, you know, one of those uh, guys who carry your luggage out of the hotel and you kind of just flip them a coin. How much? How much should we tip him? What are, what's the normal tip here? Do we even tip him? Why do we tip him? <laughs> He's doing his job. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> yeah, look what God said to the Israelites. Malachi chapter 1, starting in verse 6. A son honors his father and a servant his master. If then I am a father, where is my honor? And if I'm a master, where is my fear? Says the Lord of hosts to you, O priest, who oh. despise my name. Well, how are they despising his name, Dougie? Continue, please. But you say, how have we despised your name? By offering polluted food upon my altar? Oh, defiled offerings. Keep going, Dougie. But you say, how have we polluted you? By saying that the Lord's table may be despised. You know what? Let's save the best for ourselves. We'll just got, we'll just offer God, you know, uh, the leftovers. We've just got to get something up on that altar. Just it's get perfect. it to him. Let's satisfy it's him, very, whatever. It's very mechanical. We do this, he'll do that. We do this, he'll do That's how it works. Yeah. Um, by saying that the Lord's table may be despised, when you offer blind animals and sacrifice, is that not evil? Well, wait a second, Doug. They were making animal offerings. I mean, come on. Yeah, they were but animals that they wouldn't be keeping anyways. There you go. Remember, God said, you will offer to me what? Your first fruits. And unblemished. Right. They're looking around going, Oh God, we know we need to make an offering to God. It's part of the, you know, the law. There's some of unblemished right there, but man, why don't we keep the unblemished for ourselves? Oh, yeah. oh there's a blind one right there. What are we gonna do with the blind one? He's not gonna make it probably, or take the runt of the litter, or whatever it is. Let's toss that one to God. Hey, you know what, Dougie? We check. We just satisfied our requirement of worship. Keep going, Douglas. And when you offer those that are lame or sick, is that not evil? Present that to your governor. Will mm. he accept you or show you favor, says the Lord of hosts? And now entreat the favor of God that he may be gracious to us. In other words, God saying, you have the audacity to, to come to me and say, hey, God, will you show us favor? And... Uh, with such a gift from your hand, will he show favor to any of you, says the Lord of hosts? Oh, that there were one among you who would shut the doors that you might not kindle my kindle on my altar in vain. What was God I saying? I don't want any more of these offerings. Stop it. I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts, and I will not accept an offering from your hand. Oh, Doug. So in other words, um, it's not so much the act of offering something. It's not so much the act of worship. It's more the Heart. attitude. The attitude. Yeah. Now let's go back to the two brothers as we conclude, Douglas. And you can mm -hmm. kind of summarize this and maybe bring in a, a practical application unless you need me to help you since you're not breathing so well. Let's well, tie it together. This is exciting too, because my computer's down to 9%. For some reason, my plug isn't working. Okay, so we've got to go. Know, so I could just drop at any moment. You'll have to close the show. So Douglas, why don't you bring us home verses one through five? Now, Adam and Eve knew his wife. This is chapter four in Genesis. And she conceived and bore Cain saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again, she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep and Cain, a worker of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. And Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. And what was Cain's response? Repentance? So very remorse? Angry. Huh? Very angry and his face fell. Who was he angry with? I think he's angry with God. Um, hello. Remember we talked about the two lines? We'll dig into this next week, but take a guess, Dougie. Which line was Cain in? 
I'm going to say it's not the, the godly line. Which line was Abel in? I would say it looks like the godly line. We are seeing what God has said in Genesis 3.15 playing out right there in the same family. And we will see the results of that. Doug, just real quick, application when it comes to offering, how would we, you tie that in as a pastor? Well, uh, when it comes comes to offering, the offering is is from your heart and not from just the activity of an offering. But uh, Doug, is the offering just simply we have to give money or something? What are we talking about here? I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> Isn't it worship? Yes, it's worship. Yes. I mean, and that's all part of it. And money is part of the act, an act of worship, giving money to God. That's a, that's an act of worship, uh, but all of it stemming from your heart desire to honor God yep. in song and showing go. up on Sundays. There you go. There you go. And right. so if you want to tie into our little zoomers and you're sitting in pajamas on your couch and you're singing praise songs, okay, I listen, you're not making an offering to me or to you, Doug, but it's to God. Um, what is God saying about that offering? Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. um, when, you know, we're studying the word and your mind's racing and you're thinking of, let's say, the football game or the restaurant afterwards or you're looking, it's a, what kind of offering is that? For us as preachers, we're up there preaching, but we're not really concerned if people are, you know, you know, uh, you know, interacting or being engaged with God. We want them to focus on us. What kind of offering is that? What does God say about that offering? It's it's worthless. He'd it rather is. not have it. Exactly. It's no different than what the Israelites were doing, offering a blind uh, or or deformed or defiled animal. So we all have a homework assignment for this week before Dougie's computer goes out. Number one, we all need to pray for our brother Douglas that he will recover fully. Mm -hmm. Number two, you guys, dear listeners, pray for Doug and pray for me that our offering, when we study this week and prepare for our sermons and then preach our sermons, that our offering would be acceptable to God. And you also pray for each other and yourselves when it comes to your offerings this week to the Lord. Let me pray. Father, thank you for um, your word. Thank you for this time that we have to look at it and think about it. Lord, I pray that you anchor truths into our heart. And I know that um, your Holy Spirit will be applying this to each of us, everyone listening right now, and both Andrew and I in different ways. Um, because we're different people, and you can meet us exactly where each of us are. We are thank you for we are thankful for your gifts and your mercy and your grace mm -hmm. and your love. We recognize um, our desire to be in charge so many times and to move our way rather than your way, and we confess that. And we are grateful that you hear that and then you receive that, and that you have provided a substitute for us in Jesus Christ, who died on a cross, took our sin and overcame it and gives us his righteousness so that we can live lives that are pleasing to you and fulfilling to us. We have, thank you so much, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I was less concerned about your computer battery going out than, rather than your breathing battery going out you doing okay buddy doing great man i'm at four percent right. we're about done but all right thanks for listening we're so glad you joined us on this narrow gate next week we'll find out a little bit more about Cain and abel and by the way dear listeners <coughs> dougie stepped up this week i mean what a trooper he went from going to a minor league baseball game and skipping uh, one of our narrow gate podcasts to literally crawling out of the hospital a couple of days going look at you dougie yes yes you are the man uh, doug go get some rest will you
Um, next week, I won't be here. I have a nail appointment. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. Manny Petty. <laughs>